united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, united with Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us. My name is Albert Ibarra. I'm the Executive Director of Teen Challenge here in El Paso. And our guest with us today is Betty Aguilar, our Women's Program Director. We just want to uh, share with you what God is doing in the Ministry of Teen Challenge and what He's doing in the whole body of Christ, but with uh, Teen Challenge in particular. Uh, Teen Challenge El Paso is a women's residential program. It's a 10 to 12 month long residential program and it's free of charge. Uh, we work with women 18 years of age and older. It's free of charge. We don't charge any monthly fees or anything like that. Um, and it's free to the public, uh, the viewing public. As far away as you are, if you're watching this program, then it's free of charge to, if you know of someone who's struggling with a life-controlling problem, and life-controlling problems are, can be one of many, uh, many things. But you know what? We give God all the honor and all the glory for what He's doing in the lives of these ladies whom He brings into our care. Each of the ladies in the program has their own bedroom. Uh, there's a, a, a nine bed facility there at the main facility. And our reentry house, we can house up to four ladies. So all together we can house 13 individuals. And the important thing, it's about the individual, not how many people we have, but each lady has their own room and it's, there's a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. We spend over 40 hours a week in Bible instruction. It's almost like a Bible school environment. But Betty's gonna be sharing a little bit about that. Um, but what I'd like to do right now, we have a video clip of our Teen Challenge facility. It's a small clip, and uh, we'd like for you to see it, and it talks about, you'll see some of the girls, some of the stuff that's going on there at the center, and uh, we'd like to uh, invite you to see this, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about what's going on at Teen Challenge. Thank you. the Lord. Something very important for us, as you just saw that clip, you know, uh, it, it takes funds, but most important, it takes prayer and the grace and anointing of God. 
and a very important word that's so very important for me and the ministry of Teen Challenge uh, with our staff and our board is a word called integrity. I'm going to read from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 17 about integrity. Uh, something that God had called David to do and, and God was blessing uh, David as he prepared to rebuild the temple or to build the temple. And, and, but there was something he said in that passage, in that, in that verse that is so very important. And we saw how God blessed him because of that. And it's very important to us in Teen Challenge. Because in the world we live in today, we see so much lack of integrity, compromise here and there, and all over the place. But for God's people, in God's work, in God's ministries and churches, integrity is foremost and central in what we do in obedience to God. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 17, it says, I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. Isn't that interesting? I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things have I given willingly and with honest intent. You see, Dave gave willingly David gave willingly and with honest intent there was nothing behind no agendas none of this stuff it was what God put him to do God had blessed him and and God did it uh in his heart and 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 David responded and he gave willingly and with honest intent and the last part of the verse goes like this and now I have seen with joy how willingly your people who are here have given to you you see David and his leadership team, they started giving first of what God had given them. And the people saw, the people saw him and they followed his lead. A leader leads by example, good, bad or ugly, amen. And so they saw David and, and he gave willingly to the Lord and with honest intent and the people responded. Integrity, a couple of things. The quality uh, of definitions of integrity, the quality of being honest and fair, the state of being complete or whole. Number one, firm adherence to a code of especially moral values. In other words, incorruptibly, uncorruptibility. Number two, an impaired condition, an unimpaired condition. In other words, soundness, you're solid, you're sound, you're uncorruptible. You can't be corrupted because of your dedication and, and your integrity and your commitment to God. Number three, the quality or state of being completed being complete or undivided completeness man you, you, what you're doing is solid and what you're doing uh, the, it's sound and it's not corruptible because it's of of the lord and unto the lord you know a couple of other things that goes with in, uh, integrity is honesty honor integrity of course what we just read and prob uh, probity probity all mean uprightness of character or action Uprightness of character or action. Honesty implies a refusal to lie, steal, or deceive in any way. Honor suggests an active or anxious regard for the standards of one's profession, calling, or profession, or position. Isn't that awesome? You, you, you're honorable in, in, your, in what you're doing, in your calling, or your position in ministry, or even out in the community. Integrity implies trustworthiness and uncorruptibility to a degree that one is incapable of being false to a trust, to a responsibility, or to a pledge. Probity, probity implies tried and proven honesty or integrity. See, the integrity of a person, their testimony leads to a good name. It can be trusted. It's true. Here's a couple of examples in Proverbs chapter three, verse three and four says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Isn't that awesome? To win favor with God and man leads is because of integrity, honesty, uh, honor, and, and all these things. Because you can't be corrupted. People can trust you because you have a good name. First with God and then with man. Because it's the word of God, that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And this is what we try to teach with our students in Teen Challenge about uh, integrity. It's not just about being religious and say you're a Christian. It's about your life demonstrating that you are one. Because it, your life is different. And Proverbs 22, 1 says, A good name is more desirable than great riches. 
to be esteemed is better than silver or gold. You see, <laughs> a good name is more important than all the toys one can gather or, or how good one looks out in the community because if your name don't mean much, then what you got, people are going to question what you got and how you got it. But when you're honest before God and you have integrity, people know they can't poke holes in your testimony because it's true, it's solid, it's sound, and God is glorified because you're obeying out of a personal relationship. You're not obeying because you have to. You're obeying because you love God and you want to, and you want to please Him. Remember in First Chronicles 29, 17, I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased. God is pleased when people want to please Him. Amen? And Philippians 1, 27, Philippians chapter 1, verses 27 and 28, it goes like this. Whatever happens, conduct, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. And I'm going to share a little bit the rest of that passage. But look at the first part of this passage. Whatever happens, whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ Jesus. You see, when everything's going good, man, I mean, it, whew, you're upright, you're solid and all this. Man, you're, you're number one Christian when everything's falling in place. But when things come in, when the storms of life come and, and you're getting shaken and this and that and whatever, you know, whatever is not solid is going to be shaken. And then all of a sudden you start seeing, oh, oh, all these things going on. Wow. Whatever happens. Even in the good, the bad, and the ugly, whatever happens, your conduct is solid. Look at Jesus at the cross, man. He could have gotten mad. He could have called the angels from heaven to, to kill everybody that was picking on him and insulting him and all that. Even in then, he showed integrity. He didn't get mad and get into the flesh and do all this and say all these things. No. And sometimes for us in ministry, even in leadership, I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for many years. I've been in ministry for over 30 years. I've learned that, you know what? Jesus doesn't yell at us. Jesus doesn't mistreat us. Jesus doesn't do all these things and play games with us. So neither shall we and neither should we. Amen. So when we minister to our students, we never yell at them. We never mistreat them. We never tell them to do things we wouldn't do because that's integrity. Because whenever the students leave, whether they finish the program or not, it's about the love of God and that they get to fall in love with Jesus Christ in a personal way. You see, Integrity in a, person's, uh, in a person's personal life is very important. Integrity in a person's marriage is very important. And these are things that we teach our students and something that we as staff, uh, I, I drill and I, and, and I share with our staff every Wednesday, uh, staff uh, training. Another word, integrity at a person's work of business, whether you are an employee or the business owner, integrity is very important. It's so lacking in this world we, we live in today. Integrity in the ministry and how one and the whole team conduct themselves is very important. It's very important not only to tell our students what they're supposed to do, but also to be an example and show them how it's supposed to be done. It's not do as I say, not as I do. Integrity as a leader or a pastor over a church or church group is very important. We live in a world where sin destroys the integrity of a person and then affects whatever that person does and says, which leads to mistrust, not being believed, loss of integrity, and the list goes on. You know what? Let's keep our eyes on the Lord and keep our integrity for the sake of the gospel. And that's what we pray about Teen Challenge, being a ministry of integrity to where whatever is entrusted into our care, people will know that we're going to handle it uh, correctly and to honor God and to bless people. Because this is God's work. Amen. And I'm going to ask Betty to share with us a little bit uh, what God is doing there at the center. And she's going to be talking about our upcoming banquet as well. Betty. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Albert. And um, I want to thank you for listening once again and and just share with you a little bit about what God is doing there at Teen Challenge. Uh, right now at the moment, we do have two spaces available. So if you need help and you've been thinking about um, should I call, should I not call, Please make that call. Um, if you're tired of being tired, you know we pray for these beds that God would fill them with those women that are tired of being tired and are ready to surrender their lives to Christ. And uh, we give the ladies Bible study there. 
like Pastor has shared before, it's type of it's a type of Bible school atmosphere. Uh, the ladies study from eight in the morning till four in the afternoon. They get over forty hours of um, Bible school training, where they're in uh, group Bible study, individual Bible study, and just learning about God and what God wants to do in their lives. And uh, we start off with prayer. We we pray three times a day with the ladies and just teach them to uh, and help them to build that relationship with Christ because we know that it is only through Christ that they can be set free and transformed. And you know, this morning as I was um, in there with the ladies during prayer time, it was so awesome to, to see the ladies crying out to God and pouring out their hearts and asking God to help them with all the areas that they're struggling with. They were praying for their children, for their spouses, uh, for relationships that have been broken because of their lifestyle and um, just asking God to mend those relationships. And, um, and you know, as I was getting ready to, because the first thing that you want to do when you see someone hurting is you're, you, you want to just go and wrap your arms around them and tell them that it's going to be okay and just let them know that you're there for them. But I really felt that the Lord say, said to me to stay back you know, to let him do what only he can do. And that was to just love them and surround them. And then he gave me this scripture to share with them that I want to share with you today. And it's in Psalm 91, 14 to 16. And the scripture reads like this. It says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And you know, in the beginning, like it says here, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. And you know, the girls are, are learning the ladies to acknowledge his name, to know who God is in their lives. And they're crying out to him and he's answering because we have families come in and, and to hear the families say, you know what, I have not seen you this happy in a long time. And, and to just come and, and let us know that their daughters are different and the way they speak, the way they interact with their children when they come to visit them. It's so awesome to just see what God is doing in their lives. Um, and, you know, we could not do it without the support of the churches and, and all our volunteers. We work with a lot of volunteers. It takes so many to be able to take um, Teen Challenge forward. We do have a banquet coming up. That banquet theme is pressing forward. And, you know, we do that every single day. We press forward with these ladies that are there teaching them to press forward and not look back, not go back, but book, go forward. And yes, there's going to be struggles. Yes, there's going to be temptations. Yes, there's even going to be some slips here and there. But you know what? Teaching them that God is faithful to forgive them and to keep them moving forward. And all they have to do is call on him, just like he said, because he says in his word that he's just and faithful to forgive us. And you know what? He will lift them up and he will keep them moving forward. And it is so awesome to see when God comes and restores the ladies. And this banquet that, that we're going to be having is going to be October the 28th, which is just a few weeks away. It's going to be at Grace Gardens, and uh, it's going to start at 630 in the evening. Uh, we do have tickets if you would like to join us. It's going to be an awesome time with Mr. Joe Batluck, who is the president of uh, Teen Challenge International. He's going to come and share with us, and, and we're all looking forward to just hearing Hearing him share the heartbeat of not only Teen Challenge, but uh, throughout the United States. You know, what is going on throughout the United States? What God is doing and, and uh, just so much information that is so important to hear. So I invite you, especially if, if you work for the Justice Department, if you're a probation officer, if you're a police officer, if you work at all in any of these areas, you want to hear what he has to say. What are drugs doing all over the United States? How, how is uh, Teen Challenge helping? What is really going on? And go and just feel the heartbeat. And this way, it will help you better understand what is going on even here in our city. 
Um, this banquet is going to be a time of rejoicing also because we will be celebrating the ladies' graduations who have finished the program and we'll be celebrating just what God has done in their lives. We're gonna hear awesome testimonies of not only the students that are graduating, but even past students, you know, what God is doing in their lives and how he's reached not only them, but even their families through them, how he has come and just restored relationships and marriages and relationships of mothers with their children and children's to their mothers. We're gonna have a mother-daughter graduation which is awesome. Uh, we're gonna have um, Stephanie and Rebecca Andrade who's going to be graduating. And they're a mother daughter that have gone through Teen Challenge and they will both be graduating together. So it's gonna be an awesome time. We're also going to have a small Chinese auction and an, a silent auction. And um, some of the items that we're going to be having in the silent auction are um, tickets to Disneyland. We have four tickets to Disneyland, Disneyland, which are valued at $600. We have some Southwest Airline tickets. They're four one-way tickets valued at $800. Uh, we have a Pittsburgh Steelers autograph photo from number 84, Antonio Brown, that is valued at $169 and a whole lot of other stuff that we're going to have in our, our um, Chinese auction. The difference between the, the two is that the silent auction will be just, as it said, silent auction where you'll be able to bid on these items. But the Chinese auction is going to give everybody a chance to win. Uh, we do have tickets that are already on sale. If you're interested, give me a call at the center and I'd be glad to go over that with you and some of the items we have. Um, our tickets are going to be where you will drop it in a box and whatever item you would like to win. Um, as the ticket is drawn, then we will have a winner. So um, please come and join us. Give me a call. If you need prayer, please call us. If you have been thinking about getting help and you just don't know how, you know that's the hardest thing to do. So give us a call and we'd be glad to tell you about Teen Challenge, pray with you, and just help you to take that hard step in your life. Our number is 566-1197. Um, and we just want to thank you for, for tuning in. Please let someone know that Teen Challenge is in El Paso. We're reaching out to women 18 and older. But we can also, um, if you know maybe you have a male that needs help or a, a woman who has a child or maybe an adolescent, we can also help you with that. Please give us a call and we'd be glad to tell you of a place where you can go. Amen. Thank you, Betty. And as Betty was, uh, was sharing as well, uh, Mr. Joseph Batluck, he served for 30 years in the U.S. Army. He retired as a chaplain, and so we're inviting uh, and we're asking if you're watching and you know of anybody from Fort Bliss who would like to come in here, hear him speak. He was a chaplain for 30 years. He served several tours overseas and, and retired as a colonel uh, from the U.S. Army and retired as a, as a uh, colonel 30 years as a chaplain. And so he's going to be coming and, and speaking. So give us a call. But, you know, most importantly, you know, if you need prayer and, and you're hearing Betty and you've heard what we've shared, and, and the most important thing is if you're struggling with a life-controlling problem, whatever that may be, whatever that may be, then please call uh, at 915-532-8518, and that's the KSCE for prayer. Amen. Call the, call the TV station for prayer at 915 915- 532-8518. You see, all this is free of charge, and it's only possible through you, uh, through you, God's people, you who are watching, who prayerfully pray for us and, and support us financially, and, but, uh, and the hands-on volunteers. We have over 20-something volunteers representing uh, 12 to 15 different churches. And the churches that support us are very important because, you see, this is about the local church. We're not a ministry. We're not a parachurch ministry aside from the local church. We don't function that way. We're a tool of the local church. You see, sometimes churches aren't open 24-7, seven days a week. And, and it's understandable. And, and, uh, but sometimes when a church evangelism team is out witnessing and sharing Christ or you as individual believers are sharing the love of Jesus with someone who may be out in the streets, a drug addict, a uh, 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 someone uh, homeless, uh, 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 a prostitute who's out there and, and you're, you're sharing the gospel and they come to Christ and they need a place to go. You know, they may need a place to go and, and the local church isn't equipped for that. Well, we're a tool of the local church. They can send them here to us at Teen Challenge. We take care of them and, and we share the word of God with them. So when they go into the last phase of Teen Challenge, they get plugged into the local church. 
One of the most important things about Teen Challenge El Paso is in the last phase of Teen Challenge, the girls are encouraged to find employment, get uh, plugged into a local church, and give back to the community as they prepare uh, to move on with their lives. You see, our, we tell our students, if you don't get plugged into the local church, you're not going to make it. Because that's where you receive ministry. That's where you get involved in the local church, the Bible studies, the ministry teams. You give back. And, and that's why we take our students to many different churches here in the community. And uh, also, so, uh, Pastor, if you're watching or, or you're a member of a local church and you'd like to have Teen Challenge come and share what we're doing, then please give us a call and, and ask for Betty or for myself at 915-566-1197. And we'd love to come. You see, you don't have to give us any money. We're, we're not asking for money. We're not begging anybody for money. You know what? We get on our knees and we seek the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And it's God who touches God's people. Just like what we read in 1 Chronicles 29, 17, where David was giving, him and his ministry team were giving. And then the people saw and they gave as well. You see, so we pray it in. So you don't have to put your hand on your on your. Uh, on your pocketbook, Pastor, you don't have to put your, uh, your hand or guard uh, your, your money. We want to give back because God is blessing this ministry. We don't send our girls to the street corners to sell candies or none of that stuff. We pray it in because of integrity. And whatever is given, we pray and we give thanks. Just like the Lord when he had the fish and the loaves. You know what? He looked to heaven, gave thanks, and he fed so many people. You see, whatever the Lord sends... We thank him for it, and it pays the bills, the salaries, and the things that we need. And you know what? We're always in need of uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, perishables, paper goods, uh, uh, classroom materials. We can always use that. So g give us a call if you want to bless us that way. But you know what? It's about God's people. God, uh, the Lord said in Matthew twenty-five forty, Jesus said, Whatever you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me, says the Lord. Wow, whatever you've done unto the least of these, says the Lord, you've done unto me. So it's not about getting attention. We're, a teen Challenge is, not getting, uh, is about getting attention and see how big we can get. It's about the individual. You see mom or daughter, you have a loved one who's hurting. And it's about that loved one getting back to the family, uh, kids praying for their moms and all. So we want to thank you and keep us in prayer. God bless you and uh, be blessed. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSEE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.